Privilege Conference, they passed out this pamphlet called 29 Pitfalls of Working with White People. Because if any of you have experienced, it's just a nightmare working with white people. Who wants to work with white people? This video is a response of a very wicked man. I'm wicked because I'm white and I'm a man. And you have blue eyes. Shalom, Officer O.C. Officer Matt Adias. Uh Today we're going to deal with, uh, with the workplace. You know, as we come into this truth, we got to realize uh, we got to repent as fathers, you know, as husbands. And even in the workplace, the Most High asks us to repent and represent ourselves the correct way as Israelites. All right, so today's topic is called Wisdom at Work. All right, Wisdom at Work. Uh, give me Psalms 18 and 30. All right, because you got to realize, coming into the truth, everything that we did in the past, it, it wasn't always correct, all right? Because the scriptures ask of a certain behavior of us. All right, we got to learn what that is. Give me that. Psalms chapter 18, verse 30. Mm -hmm. As for God, mm -hmm. his way is perfect. His way is what? Is perfect. His way is sometimes perfect. Is perfect. Uh -huh. The word of the Lord is tried. Mm -hmm. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him right see god's word is tried so the things that we're going to read about today they already been tried and they proved to be effective all right now what we're going to deal with is work all right now a lot of us coming into this truth some of us are coming out of all different facets of life all right some of us had good jobs some of us didn't have a job some of us uh at the bottom of our jobs all right so the first thing we got to recognize is that god commands each and every one of us to work. That's right, brothers. You need to get off the couch and get a job, all right? There's no sitting at home. Give me Genesis 3 and 19. And I'm going to prove that with the Bible, all right? Because from the beginning, the first book, God set it up for us to have to have a job, all right? Genesis 3, verse 19. Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. Mm -hmm. In the sweat of thy face. In the what? In the sweat of thy face. In the sweat of thy face, meaning it's going to be hard. That's why you got to go to work for 12, 13 hours and get paid $7. The Most High said, in the sweat, read, of thy face uh -huh. shalt thou eat bread. Shalt thou do what? Eat bread. That's how you're going to eat, brothers and sisters. You got to work, read, till thou return unto the ground. Uh -huh. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Right, so God says, until you, till you pass off this earth, you're going to be working. That's how the Most High ordained it to be set up. Give me Deuteronomy 28 48. Just in case, maybe you might think that's talking about Adam. All right? Well, God God puts all throughout the scriptures that we have to work. All right? That's that's something that we have to get out of that mindset, brothers and sisters. You can't sit at home and live off your mom or live off welfare or live off whatever checks. No, God says work. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Uh huh. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. Shalt thou what? Serve thine enemies. Serve your enemies. That's work, brothers and sisters. That is work. That's a job. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee uh -huh. in hunger uh -huh. and in thirst. Uh -huh. In hunger and thirst, you're going to work. Read. And in nakedness. In nakedness. Read. And in want of all things. In want of all things, brothers. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Now give me Second, second Thessalonians chapter 3 and 10. All right, we just want to make it crystal clear. Old Testament, New Testament. Apocrypha. We want to make sure we make it clear that you guys understand out there that God, God says you got to work, brothers. Read. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. Mm -hmm. For even when we were with you, mm -hmm. this we commanded you. This we what? Commanded you. This is a commandment, brothers. Read. That if any would not work, uh -huh. neither should he eat. If he's not working, neither should he eat. So sisters out there, when following other camps. Don't let that man tell you that he's supposed to be at home and you're supposed to be out there working and provide for him because he's a king. That's not scriptural, brothers and sisters. Read. That was it all on that one. Mm -hmm. All right. Now give me 1 Timothy 5 and 8 just to show you how important it is because we got to lay the foundation before we get into this that you understand that you have to work. Read. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. Mm -hmm. But if any provide not for his own. If any what? Provide not for his own. How are you going to provide for your own if you don't have a job? Read. And especially for those of his own house. Right. 
He hath denied the faith. He hath what? Denied the faith. So how are you a king, but God says you denied the faith if you're not working? Read. And is worse than an infidel. Worse than what? An infidel. So you ain't a king of Israel. You might be a king of Amalek, but that doctrine that you don't have to work and the wives go out and work for you, that's not scriptural. All right? Give me uh, Sirach 7 and 15, and we're in, in this little section on this, all right? Because God says, work, work, work in the sweat of your face. That's how you're going to eat your bread. Read. Sirach chapter 7, verse 15. Uh -huh. Hate not laborers work. Do what? Hate not laborers work. God says, hate not laborers work. So things look like it's hard to do. I don't want to do that job. That's too much work. God says, hate not. That's why I told you, you got to repent. And look at these scriptures and analyze yourself. Read. Neither husbandry. Uh-huh. Which the most high ordained. Which he what? Ordained. Y'all see that, brothers and sisters? It's ordained of God. It's pleasing to God that you go out and work and make a earnest living for your family. Honest living for your family. Alright? Now, go to Exodus 28. Okay, now that we understand that we gotta work. So some brothers might have a job, some brothers might be applying for jobs. The most important thing, brothers and sisters, when you go out into the workforce, all right, and you're trying to get a job, number one, make sure you keep the commandments of God. Just in case you didn't know, there's one day out of the week that us as Israelites, we do not work. We don't compromise. All right, give me Exodus 20 and verse 8. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember what? The Sabbath day. Read. To keep it holy. Uh-huh. Six days shalt thou labor mm -hmm. and do all thy work. Mm -hmm. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. All right, the seventh day you don't do any work, brothers and sisters. Now, I know the first thing coming across a lot of y'all mind. Well, I can't get off on the Sabbath. Well, I work on the Sabbath. Uh, my job is very important that I'm there on the Sabbath. All right, brothers and sisters, we're going to go to the scriptures. All right, we're going to go through the scriptures and we're going to see what did our ancestors do when they came into situations that... that uh, they thought they might have to compromise on God's laws. Let's see how they how they responded. All right, give me Daniel chapter one verse eight because we understand that we're in captivity today. All right, we are in captivity. We all understand that, but you have to do the best of your ability to keep God's law. All right, Daniel chapter one verse eight. Uh huh. But Daniel proposed purpose in his heart uh -huh. that he would not defile himself that he would what he would not defile himself so daniel said he wasn't going to break god's law statutes commands read with the portion of the king's meat uh -huh. nor with the wine which he drank uh -huh. therefore he requested he a, did what he requested he requested brothers and sisters you have to ask make your request known to your to your boss to your employee read Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. That he what? That he might not defile himself. What's that? Transformed to 2015, brothers. That's a work letter. All right. When you're amongst the body, after three months, all right, we issue a, a letter so you can get your religious beliefs off. All right. So you can wear your beard. So you can get the Sabbath day off. Things of that nature. We make that available to you. Give me first, uh, first Ezra chapter 8 and verse 3. Let's get another example of our forefathers. How did how did they uh, deal with situations that arise? All right, read that. First Ezra chapter eight verse three. Uh -huh. This Ezra went up from Babylon mm -hmm. as a scribe, uh -huh. being very ready in the law of Moses. So Ezra was very ready in the laws. Read that was given by the God of Israel. Uh huh. And the king did him honor. And the king did what? Him honor. The king did him honor. Read. For he found grace. He found what? Grace. Uh huh. In his sight, in all his requests. In what? In all his requests. So, brothers and sisters, it's been done before. It's going on today. All right. But that you have a lack of faith. All right. If the first thing came across your mind, though, my boss ain't gonna let me do that. That means you don't believe in his truth. Give me John 14 and 14. All right. Because you you gotta understand on a spiritual level that everybody everybody that's above you, God placed them there. So he wouldn't have woke you up to repent and give you a boss that's not going to give you a chance to keep God's law. And if that is the case, then guess what? You need to start filling out application and find another another place to work. All right, give me that, John 14 and 14. John chapter 14, verse 14. Mm -hmm. If ye shall ask anything. If you shall what? Ask anything. The Sabbath day? 
Ask anything. Read my beard. Ask anything. Read. In my name, uh -huh. I will do it. God says he will do it. Why? Because he wants you to keep God's law, statutes, and commandments. He's the one that put us in captivity. He's the one that set up America in this way so that you can keep God's laws. All right, and all you got to do is fill out a piece of paper, and now guess what? They can't tell you that you can't wear your beard. You can't wear your fringes. All right, give me Proverbs 21 and 1, and I'm going to prove that statement that I just made with the scriptures. All right, because the Most High ordained us to keep his laws, statutes, and commandments, even on the job. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. The what? The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. You see that? Your job, your boss, his heart is in the hands of the Lord. The Most High is controlling him. All right? You might not think, oh, that joke ain't going to never let me get the Sabbath out. God controls his heart. All right? So, now we realize that we got to work. We realize what days we can and cannot work on. All right? So now we got the job. What's the next step? All right? So now we're making a good amount of money. What should we do with these funds that we're getting? Give me Ephesians 4 and 28. All right, because a lot of people, they come in, now they got a job, they're working. Don't forget, don't forget about the Most High. Realize why you have a job. Right. To feed your family and to further this truth. All right, read that. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Mm -hmm. Let him that stole steal no more. Uh -huh. But rather let him labor, working with his hands. Let him labor, work with his hands. Read. The thing which is good. Uh-huh. That he may have to give to him that needed. May he may what? Have to give to him that needed. You see that? That excess in your paycheck, that's to help brothers and sisters out. That's why the most high ordained that you have a job. Because guess what? If 20 brothers are working and one brother get laid off, guess what? Everybody can pinch in and help the brother out till he get back on his feet. But if everybody's bums, we can't help each other and we can't we surely can't help anybody else that's coming into the body that needs help. Alright? Now uh, head to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15 Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15 okay now we're going to deal with the actual workplace how are we to behave ourselves on and at the job how are we going to set ourselves apart as Israelites alright because we're not like everybody else God says you are above all people so guess what every time you walk every time you talk that's how you should carry yourself read that Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15 mm -hmm. See then that we walk circumspectly. That we do what? That we walk circumspectly. You see that? You make sure you think about everything you say, everything you do. All right? They're having a Christmas party. You make sure you're not there. All right? They're having a birthday party. You, you got to think, how are you going to get out of these situations? That's being circumspect. Read. Not as fools. Not as what? Not as fools. Right. You're going to be caught up at the job. All right? Because you're talking about you're an Israelite all the time, and then you're in the midst of adultery. That's being a fool. Read. But as wise, mm -hmm. redeeming the time because the days are evil. Right. The days are evil. It's hard for brothers and sisters to get a job, let alone a good job. That's why God says walk circumspect. All right. Now, give me Titus 2 and 8. So that's 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 action. Now, how, how should we speak on the job? Should we walk in the job the first day and say, oh, I'm mad at thine, so I don't listen to no white man. I take no orders from nobody. God says I'm above all people. Bro, I had to be you. I'm, I'm, to be me, right? right. I'm, I'm supposed to be above everybody. <laughs> all right? Is that how you should walk into the job and be talking, telling Esau that he's the devil? No. God says don't do that. Give me that. Titus 2. Uh, verse 8. Titus, Titus 2, 2, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Sound speech. Sound what? Sound speech. All right, sound speech. Now, that might sound good to you. If you telling, uh, you talking to a brother and you saying that we're going to put... The, uh, the Gentiles and chains. But guess what? If I'm one of the other nations and I hit it on the job, that's not sound speech to me. Read. That cannot be condemned. That what? That cannot be condemned. Brothers, you will be condemned if you're talking about that on the job. That's not sound speech. Read. That he that is of the contrary part mm -hmm. may be ashamed, mm -hmm. having no evil thing to say of you. Right. They shouldn't have no evil thing to say about you. And she's like, oh, that brother, he, he's a good brother. He's quiet. He does his job. I don't have any problems with him. He's respectful. Mm, I don't know what you guys are talking about, that the black Hebrew Israelites are uh, are evil. When I Googled him, that's what came up. But he, that's not him. That's how we should carry ourselves, brothers and sisters. Because you got to understand, 
the uh, image that's being pushed of us is a negative image. So you're already at a disadvantage. So you got to make sure you carry yourself correctly. All right, now go to Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. Because I know a lot of brothers when they come into this truth, sisters come into this truth, we got a lot of zeal. We have a lot of zeal. We know about four or five scriptures, and that's all we, we want to talk about. Esau's the devil, how we came on slave ships, how we get in the kingdom. But there's a lot more in this Bible than that. All right, read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. Uh -huh. To everything, there is a season. To everything, there's a season. At the job, it's not that time for you to be talking about that. Read. And a time to every purpose mm -hmm. under the heaven. Right. So at the job, it's not time to be holding camp, brothers and sisters. That's not the time. All right. Now give me um, Matthew 10 and 16. Because we got to understand, like I told you, the odds are against us at the job, at the workplace. Lord willing, you know, uh, eventually when this truth gets bigger, you'll have somebody on the job that's uh, part of this truth. All right. We know a lot of brothers that work. Uh, and they have jobs with other brothers that's part of the camp. That's beautiful. But everybody is not going to have that uh, luxury. All right, read that. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Behold, I send you forth as sheep. As what? As sheep. Read. In the midst of wolves. Right. We are the sheep in the midst of wolves. The other nations are the wolves. They're waiting for you to mess up. All right, you walk around with fringes on. You're the only person in the, uh, in the branch that gets to wear a beard. You're the only brother that don't work on the Sabbath. So they are wolves. They looking for something. They looking for something, brothers and sisters. Go to um, Genesis. I mean, not Genesis. Yeah, Matthew. Sure. Yeah, finish that one. I'm sorry. Be wise, ye therefore. I'm sorry. Be ye therefore wise. Be what? Be ye therefore wise. Our wisdom is keeping God's laws. You got to apply them. And I told you, this Bible, all of it is commanded. So you got to be wise. Read. As serpents. Mm-hmm. And harmless as doves. And harmless as doves. Alright, how are you harmless as a dove? Because guess what? You come, you show up, you do your job, you smile, you wave, you're cordial to everybody, and you keep it moving. Alright? Um, now, go to Matthew 5 and 14. Matthew 5 and 14. Because, like I mentioned before, us being Israel, naturally, we, we do things better, we're smarter, uh, we're more efficient. So, you being at the job, you're going to stick out a little bit. It's going to happen. Read, read that. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Ye are the light of the world. Ye are the what? The light of the world. You are the light of the world. And the other nations, they understand that. Read. A city that is set on a hill mm -hmm. cannot be hid. Right. So the question is, now that you're shining, what light are you portraying? Are you portraying an Israelite? Are you, are, are you portraying a Negro? Which one are you portraying to the nations? Because guess what? They're going to see your fringes. They're going to see your beard. They're going to see your dress, sisters. They're going to see your head covered. They're going to see these things. Now, what light are you going to portray? All right? Because we got to carry ourselves as we are above all nations. Now, let's see. Let's get some examples showing you that we're above all nations in the workplace and how our forefathers handled, handled the other nations when they were on top of us. Give me Genesis 41. Genesis chapter 41, verse 39. Because a lot of people, our mindsets are still low. We don't understand that we come from kings, rulers of the earth. So that's, that's the mindset we got to have when we go into the job. All right, if I'm working at McDonald's, guess what? Yeah, I might be serving fries now, but guess what? By the end of the year, I'm going to be the manager. And then after that, I'm going to be the branch manager. And then after that, I'm going to be the CEO. That's the type of mindset we got to have. All right? And it's all in the scriptures. Give me that. Genesis chapter 41, verse 39. Uh -huh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, mm -hmm. For as much as God hath shown thee all this, mm -hmm. there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. You see that? The other nations were praising him for his wisdom. And the same thing is going to happen here. Read. Thou shalt be over my house, mm -hmm. and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. So Joseph got to a position of rulership, of rulership while he was in captivity. Read. Only in the throne will I be greater than you than thou. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Y'all see that, brothers and sisters? Joseph was set over all the land of Egypt. Why? Because he did what God wanted. He kept God's laws. Read. Verse 42. 
And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand. Pharaoh did what? Took off his ring from his hand uh -huh. and put it upon Joseph's hand. Uh -huh. And arrayed him in vestures of fine linen. Uh -huh. And put a gold chain about his neck. You see that? See, a lot of people might think, guess what? When when uh, the boss gives you a bonus, you think you think you don't sold out. But this is the same thing that our forefathers got when they kept God's law, statutes, and commandments. Now the scripture says a gift destroyed the heart, but as long as you you know why you got why you receiving these gifts, there's nothing wrong with that. But you got to understand your wisdom is above these other nations. All right, go to um, Daniel chapter two and verse forty-seven. Another one of our forefathers. Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to change your mindset, brothers and sisters, that we not we not just niggas and spicks and coons. Read that. Daniel chapter two verse forty-seven. Uh huh. The king answered unto Daniel and said, mm -hmm. Of a truth it is that your God mm -hmm. is a God of gods mm -hmm. and a Lord of kings. A Lord of kings, read. And a revealer of secrets, uh -huh. seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. So even the, the uh, right here, the king of Babylon, he understood that God was dealing with Daniel. God was dealing with him. He didn't praise Daniel, he praised his God. Read. Then the king made Daniel a great man. And because he recognized that God was dealing with him, the king made Daniel a great man, read. And gave him many great gifts. And gave him many great gifts, read. And made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon. Y'all see that, brothers and sisters? Another one of our ancestors being made a ruler over the other nations while they were in captivity. Why? Because they dealt wisely. They didn't, they didn't succumb. They didn't break any of God's laws. They did what was right. Read. And chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Right. Just to show you that that's where we come from, brothers and sisters. In captivity. All right. Now, let's go to um, Romans 12. Romans 12. All right. Now, everybody ain't going to be rolling like Daniel and like Joseph. We understand that. Some of my brothers are at the lower, lower levels. Like I said, some brothers working at McDonald's. All right, some brothers ain't got ain't got the best education. That's fine. All right, and guess what? These other nations, the lower you go, the more base those other nations are. But God gives you instructions on how to deal with them. Give me Romans 12 and 17. Romans chapter 12, verse 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Right, they tried you on the job, now you want to fight. No, that's not the way you operate. Read. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Provide things what? Honest in the sight of all men. See that? Honest in the sight of all men. Read. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, uh -huh. live peaceably with all men. Do what? Live peaceably with all men. Right. If it's possible, live peaceably. You, you surely ain't supposed to be stirring up strife on the job, brothers and sisters. That's not what we do. All right. Go to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and start at verse 1. Because the goal was, he said, live peaceably among all men. How are you going to live peaceably? Read that. First Timothy. First, second Timothy. First Timothy. I'm sorry, second. That's first. Yeah, first Timothy. Nah, I might have said second. Nah. First Timothy chapter 2. Uh, first Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. Start at 1. 1, start at 1. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, uh -huh. prayers, uh -huh. intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Be made for what? All men. Read. For kings and for all that are in authority. That are what? All that are in authority. Your boss is in authority. Read. That we may lead a quiet uh -huh. and peaceable life. Right. See, that's that's what I wanted right there. So you pray for your boss. Guess what? The boss that's letting you get the Sabbath off, you better pray for him. Because guess what? The next boss that coming in, he might say, I don't care what you believe. So you got to pray for your oppressors as long as they're allowing you to keep God's law. And guess what? If he not, you pray that he get removed and somebody else comes in. Right. So he can allow you to keep God's law. Alright? Um, now, go to Luke 16 and 9. Along the same lines. So now you're at the job. Are you learning how to deal with brothers and sisters? So, now, you know you're Israel. You're starting to understand the law, study the commandments. And now you guess what? Guess what you might end up doing? You might cut all ties with these other nations. All right, because God says be separate. That's right. When you leave the job, we don't deal with them. But on the job, let's see how God says to, to act. Luke chapter 16, verse 9. Mm -hmm. And I say unto you, mm -hmm. make to yourselves friends. Make what? Make to yourself friends. Let's see who we're supposed to make friends with. 
of the mammon of unrighteousness. With the what? The mammon of unrighteousness. The mammon of unrighteousness. These are the other nations that these people are that are of your nations that ain't keeping God's laws. But God says, make friends with them. Why? That when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitation. Right. For instance, I know brothers and sisters that are high levels in the, in the world. And guess what? When they text me, they talking about nothing, I don't really bother. But guess what I'm not going to do? I ain't going to text them, oh, you the devil. You the devil. You got the devil. I'm not going to do that. Why? Because there's times when things will arise and you need those people. Brother, brother Carr got jacked up. And guess what? Somebody not, might not be able to help you. But that brother... He might own a car dealership. He can give you a free car. Just, just simple things, brothers and sisters. Don't burn bridges. That's what they're saying. Make friends with the other nations. All right. Give me um, Sirach 27 and 12. Just in case somebody's being simple. All right. Sirach 27 and 12. Just so you don't be simple out there, brothers and sisters. We're not saying you out in the club. You going out to dinner with these people. No. We're saying you keeping it at a friendly a friendly distance at the job. Alright, read that. Sirach chapter 27 verse 12. Uh -huh. If thou be among the indiscreet, uh -huh. observe the time. Do what? Observe the time. So God says, while you're making friends with the mammon of the earth, observe the time. Exactly what I just said. It's not, this ain't you spending time with their family, you going on trips. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying they understand who you are and what you believe and guess what? They don't have a problem with that. Alright? Now go to uh, Jeremiah 2 and 33. Jeremiah 2 and 33, because it's going to say the same thing. All right? You never make any compromise when it comes to God's laws. All right? To the best of your ability. You don't do that. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 33. Mm -hmm. Why trimmest thou way to seek love? Right. Why would you trim your way to seek love? Oh, because now Esau invited you out to eat. Oh, you're not, now you think that's your friend now. Moab told you he can, he, you can have all the, my wife's going to make all the Chinese food you want at the house because you're doing a good job at the company. Now, now, now your gift, that gift is destroying your heart. Now you, guess what you're doing? You're working on the Sabbath now to make a little extra. No, no, don't do that. Give me some rock 12 and 10. All right? Don't do that, brothers and sisters. Don't fall into the trap. Right up to the point where they tell you to break God's laws, you don't do that. You don't do that. Read that. Sirach chapter 12 verse 10 Never trust thine enemy Do what? Never trust thine enemy You never trust your enemy So even though you're making friends with the mammon You still understand in the back of your mind That he's still the devil that the Bible speaks of Alright You don't trust your enemy Alright um, Alright So we're finna start wrapping it up now So at the end of the day Even though you're at the job We in captivity We in Babylon We serving the other nations Understand that God is in control of all of this. Right. Give me Proverbs 16 and 7. Because no matter how hard you work to get a job, no matter how, how hard you don't work to get a job, God's in control of your situation. All right? But as long as you're at the job, understand that. Read that. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7. Mm -hmm. When a man's ways please the Lord. When a what? When a man's ways please the Lord. Right. Your actions speak first. So God says, I understand that this brother is trying to please me. Read. He maketh even his enemies. Even his what? His enemies uh -huh. to be at peace with them. Right. We just read about that. Daniel, Joseph, they being put at high positions of power. Why? Because they were pleasing God. That was that on that one? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Now, go to Jeremiah 15 and 11. Because this Bible is so true. All right. And it, the testimonies, like we read, we read in the beginning, the way of God is perfect. God's way is perfect, but we must apply these scriptures. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 11. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, Verily, it shall be well with thy remnant. Mm -hmm. Verily, I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well. He will cause the what? I will cause the enemy. Your boss. To entreat thee well uh -huh. in the time of evil. Right. In the time of evil. So guess what? When brothers and sisters are fighting to get a job, fighting to get a meal. The most I say, he's going to make our enemies and treat us well. All right? There's many different ways that can happen. All right? Give me uh, Daniel 4 and 17. Daniel 4 and 17. Because a lot of people, you look at the, you look at the other nations and you don't understand that the most I is dealing with them just as much as he's dealing with you because 
you're dealing with the other nation. So guess what? He can change their hearts for your favor. Anything he does with them is because of you. If you're wicked, guess who he used to punish you? If you're doing good, guess who he used to, to give you the blessing? It goes both ways. Read that. Daniel chapter 4 verse 17. Uh-huh. This matter is by the decree of the watchers mm -hmm. and the demand by the word of the holy ones mm -hmm. to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. The Most High does what? That the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. Right. Who do you think is putting each of these government officials in places of power? The Most High is doing that. Not your votes. Read. And giveth it to whom, whomsoever he will. Right. God is doing that. Read. And setteth up over it the basis of men. Right. He's putting the basis of men over you. That's why a lot of times you go to the job, you're like, how is this man the manager? I can do this thing a million times better than him. But God says he set it up like that. Because we broke God's laws, brothers and sisters. All right. Now give me uh, Romans 13 and 3. Alright, we must understand the role that we have to play at the job and at the workplace. It's very important to us. Because us being first first generation Israelites, we are setting the standard for everybody else that comes behind us. Nobody has ever seen this before. Nobody's ever seen fringes. Nobody's ever seen men with beards. Alright, we're changing the culture of the black man and, and Hispanic man and Native American man across America in the workplace. We're doing that. Read. Romans chapter 13 verse 3 mm -hmm. For rulers are not a terror to good works Right, your boss is not a terror to good works You want to keep the Sabbath day because that's your beliefs? Go ahead, read But to the evil But to the what? But to the evil To you Negroes and Hispanics, read Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Mm -hmm. Do that which is good and thou shalt have praise of the same Right, when you're doing good the Most High is going to take care of you Alright now, all the everything that we brought out as well, but we always gonna end up with the same scripture. All right, First Samuel two and three, because you listening to these scriptures. All right, it doesn't mean anything if you do not apply these scriptures in your lives. That's why we're doing this class, because we want people to put forth actions. Actions. Read that. First Samuel chapter two, verse three. Mm -hmm. Talk no more so exceedingly proud. So don't talk about what you're gonna do. Read. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by Him actions are weighed. So God is going to weigh your actions. Your actions. Alright? So with that, we say Shalom. Shalom. I'm Elton Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join our UIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.